This printer is huge. Anycubics Cobra 3 Max is their largest yet with multi-material support. I reserved this in December and got it the day Bamboo's H2D was announced. So I need to find out if I'm keeping this or returning it. It works well for a printer of this price class, but there is a lot left unfinished. We have a lot of frustration to talk about. Stick around because I'll tell you why this shouldn't be your first printer and put this to the test with some truly massive prints. If you need even bigger prints or need prints now, then go to PCBWay to get it done. While this Cobra 3 Max has a 420 millimeter print bed, PCBWay can print up to two meters wide in multiple material types. Upload your STL, select your options, and you'll get a quote in seconds. PCBWay also offers CNC machining, custom PCBs, PCB assembly, and more. Use the link in the description below for $5 off your first order. This was easy enough to unbox and build if you have prior experience with 3D printers, but you'll see why. As a first printer, someone would get frustrated. It came flat packed with no real advertised time to get set up, with the Ace Pro coming in a separate box. Pull everything out and you get a paper with a QR code on it and links to a build video. I honestly hated this because I like my print instructions and can't stand seeking around a video on my phone with these little sausage fingers. There's also a lot of inaccuracies in the video that we'll touch on throughout the build. I did find out later that there's a PDF I could have printed on the USB stick, but it was too late by then. My first issue was that these support rods were different lengths. These are easy to adjust since I've seen tie rods before, but a beginner may not know. After extending one about two revolutions, they were about the same length. The heads were tight and took some effort to move, so at first it may not seem like they are supposed to move. But I got them to the same length, bolted them in. Next, the video showed the four hole extruder top already on, but mine came shipped with this one hole extruder top already in place. I knew how to replace it since there's only two screws in the back, but again, a beginner may not know. When I saw the four ports in the video, I assumed it already had the ACE instructions on it too, but it didn't. There was a blank plate on the side here that you can pop out and install the new cutter in. Super simple, but not obvious. During setup, it'll have you connect to your Wi-Fi, but what it doesn't tell you is that it only supports 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, not five or six gigahertz. Bamboo is the same, so I have a guest network that's already 2.4 gigahertz only, but this will cause issues for those that don't know or are unfamiliar with any kind of networking. All right, moving over to the ACE. It comes with its own power plug because it has a built-in heater that pulls more power than the printer can pass over its little cable. It also comes with a laughably small amount of filament, which honestly probably doesn't even have enough for a Benchy since it also has to fill what looks like eight foot long PTFE Bowden tubes from the ACE to the printhead. Filament has to go straight down into the ACE as there is another hole beneath the surface that is just big enough for the filament. So your filament can't be bent at all. And I've spent plenty of time just reinserting. The setup was rough, but anyone with experience can stumble through it just fine. A beginner may struggle so look for alternate build videos and information as well. All right, printing Benchy. Before we move to the slicer, the onboard storage has a few Benchies and other models like a camera mount for us to try. There is a fast 18 minute Benchy and a slower 40 some minute Benchy, but I can't tell what the settings are using because the onboard storage is not accessible. I recently learned that there are Benchy speed runs with minimal requirements. So any cubic is probably using a 0.25 layer height, 0.5 millimeter width, trihexagon infill, and other similar settings that sacrifice quality for speed used in those competitions. It was exactly 18 minutes after preheating and such, so let's print the other Benchy. 
When compared, you can see the sacrifice is made, but it's still a good looking Benchy. It's just not one for one when advertising how fast it can print though. My assumption was at the same settings, but using the 600 millimeter per second print speed to truly print similar Benchies faster. Honestly, I think once you start spending north of $300 on a printer with auto leveling, the quality of the print plateaus, and now you're paying for features like size, speed, and multi-material support instead. Now that we've printed the provided models, we need to move to Anycubic Slicer, which seems to be forked from Orca. In another video later, but now realizing both Bamboo and Anycubic fork from Orca, I want to revisit Bamboo's security changes and see if I can control both printers from one slicer. This one uses Maker Online. This printer just came out, so I can't really complain about the lack of Cobra 3 Max advertised support or models. The slicer itself seems very unfinished too, but in ways that isn't isolated to this printer being new. The first thing I noticed was that the localization was incomplete. For example, when browsing models, the sorting at the top is half Chinese and half English. Another example of being incomplete without even considering the printer is that I bought a roll of fast PLA from Anycubic to test fast printing on a huge printer, but there are no fast PLA profiles for their own brand. The RFID tag automatically identifies as standard PLA. I can make my own profile, but I was never able to really improve that print speed a whole lot. Finally, the camera right here. Pre-orders were supposed to go in for free if there were enough orders, which apparently there wasn't because I didn't get one, but there was no communication either. I had to order one coming from mainland China. It actually just got here a few days ago. It looks like a cheap Raspberry Pi camera with a small LED light that honestly does nothing. I'd use an LED bar that I use to light whatever I'm filming for most of the footage using the onboard camera. The video looks maybe 480 pixels at two frames per second, but it was at least plug and play. I wanted to test their AI detection since that is a feature my P1S doesn't have. So I printed a calibration cube and deliberately started poking at it while it was printing. Right when I was about to give up, it finally prompted me that there was an issue. It worked, not bad, and would save you some filament if your print started to have issues, which is nice. I bought a big printer to make big prints, so I wanna start with these dragons. My daughter loves the articulating dragon so this blew her mind when we pulled it off the print bed. Scaling to the entire print bed, it took 33 hours to print. Again, quality is good. What you'd expect from any printer north of $300, it just wasn't fast. I was really disappointed at the speed because large prints take a ton of time and even small percentages can shave hours off. This white one with standard Anycubic PLA so I put it in the gray fast PLA and selected sport mode. I couldn't find any documentation on what the actual changes are, but the community seems to say stable is 30% slower and sport is 30% faster. However, I bet with a less detailed model with less sharp corners, it'd be faster than that. Anyway, she is going to start painting this one as soon as I'm done with this video. All right, so let's see what this Ace Pro can do. I found these little pandas and shrunk them down a bit because the Cobra was estimating all day to print, which was a terrible first sign. I sent the same model to my Bamboo P1S to compare quality, speed, and waste. Each slicer provided me wildly different estimates. Purge filament wasn't calculated by any cubic, maybe because the Panda purge tower and poop was 140 grams. My P1S totaled it in at 51 grams. 
That is a huge amount of waste. I wouldn't advertise that either. It's also why my P1S was able to print three and a half hours faster than the Cobra's six and a half hours. I also learned the hard way that painted models, you can't change the index of filaments in the ACE or AMS to change the colors in the model. This one had to have black in slot one and white in slot two. I had to physically move my filament around to match that. Super annoying. So if you know how to do that, please let me know in the comments, link a, a wiki or something, or just straight up tell me. Anyway, quality is subjective. Both turned out fine, but my bamboo printer is earning a permanent spot on that shelf due to waste alone. Never mind being able to print ABS in an enclosure, because I don't have room for an enclosure for this one. Now the big print I am most excited for, the Big Benchy. I printed one for my A1 Mini, and then I printed one for my P1S. In the nozzle video, which I'll link somewhere. The print bed is 64% larger than the A1 P1 X1's bed of 256 millimeters. That doesn't sound like much, well this shows you just how big it can get. A total of two and a quarter rolls of filament totaling about 4.5 kilograms including supports and waste. Normally, when you print Benchy, you don't use supports, but at the size of these overhangs are so large, like the cabin roof underneath, and heavy, that you kind of need to. I let it do support so I didn't have to do this 3.5 day print twice. There's a lot of time, and if it fails, that's a lot of filament waste. I was also testing the filament auto refill feature here, and the first run out went well because it selected another white filament to use. When the roll ran out, it selected a black instead of another white that was available. I was watching it at the time, so I cut the black, let it purge, and made sure the only other option it could use was white. So we ended up with one black layer here. I also discovered that while not common, it's also not rare to get tangled filament from any cubic, which drew out the print time because at 3 a.m. it'd get tangled, pause until I woke up at 7 a.m. for my day job. Finally, it's done, and these supports were oddly satisfying to remove. This thing is huge, and I need a way to make more content with it. And just in case you're wondering, since the little benchies don't float, these don't either. I want to redo this with a floating one and throw it in my pool but I need some of that YouTube money before throwing $25 at another Benchy print. You may know how this review will end, but there's some good too. You're, if you're going to buy it, then it'll be because of its large 420 millimeter print bed and multi-material support. And that works. And it works quite well as advertised. Like the latest AMS2, the Ace Pro has a built-in heater to improve your print quality and while I didn't test it, the printer doesn't seem to be locked down like Bamboo had to do. I have plenty of complaints, but for the reasons you'll buy this, it will work as advertised, it'll work great, you'll get large, multi-color prints given enough time and money. But let's review what didn't go well. The build instructions were poor and out of sync, which could be an issue for someone new to the hobby, but probably not that bad for somebody already experienced. This is big and heavy since it's slinging a massive print bed, but that also means it won't be kind to wobbly tables. Heh. <laughs> so move to a solid wood table or steel. No included camera like the bamboo, although I had did get mine for $12.50 on sale to my door, so keep out an eye out for those sales. During setup, this only supports 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, so disable five gigahertz if you have to, because there is no wired connection either. The anti-cubic filament I have was tangled, which I've never had an issue with from bamboo, inland, e-sun, Creality, 
you know, all the others. The amount of waste was honestly surprising. When I put the panda on the scale, my jaw hit the floor with an audible, oh my God. With three times the filament compared to my P1S, finally, there was no profile for any Cubic's fast PLA, which honestly is just inexcusable for an in-house product. Will I keep it? Honestly, yeah, probably. It's larger than the 350 millimeter print bed of that Bamboo H2D and significantly less costly. The Elegoo Neptune 4 Max doesn't have multi-material support, which even though I really won't be using much, it's nice to have the auto refill of the Ace and a place I can leave filaments for days. Although if Elegoo wants to send me the Giga, I'd be happy to print an even bigger Benchy. If I were to do it again, I would at the price I paid, $600, and would absolutely not at the MSRP of $1,000. On its own, with a dryer box, that kind of comes to close to the $600 price tag, but then I wouldn't get the Ace Pro for heating and changing filaments, so I might as well just go for it, right? I wish the print head had a fifth tube slot so I could load up a five kilogram spool and let it go for days, but I can manage by unplugging the Ace and borrowing a Bowden tube if I really have to. All right, so let me know what you've been printing. What would you make with a printer this size? I have a solution looking for a problem. A lot can change for an early product like this, so let me know if something has been updated to address anything in this video.